My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and we're going to crack on with this uh, engine architecture series. So, I'm kind of doing a bit and bits and... Oh, bloody hell, straight away. <laughs> trying to do bits and pieces in the background um, to try and keep the flow of this going. Um, so, you can see I've put some spouts on the uh, water jacket. I've confined everything apart from the selector mechanism, because I'm still working that out. And I've done loads of chicken sketches on a pad, and I'm just trying to work out a few things. Um, when I was looking at it, I was like, right, number one is let's move this balancer shaft. I think it's better there. It's more compact design. And looking at the whole system and thinking about it, I don't want the split line there. So we can get rid of that. And we'll put the new split line in, which is there. So this is where we're going to split it. So actually... When we look at it level on like that, you'll see that the cylinders, in a sense, are pointing backwards, but that's not entirely true. The engine is going to be sat in this position, kind of like that. The cylinder's still leaning forward, but the split line is going to be on an angle instead of horizontal to the bike. So basically, between the line that runs between parallel with the floor between the two axles, so the split line is going to be and an angle like this. And I can't remember what this angle is. I think it's 28 degrees or something like that. Regardless. So we've done all these space models. We've got all these bits and pieces in here. Now we need to get on to the rest of it. So this is one of the... Once you put all this together, you think, oh, you know, I've just squeezed that in there and I've just squeezed that. Oh, this is all good. And I was thinking about the gearbox, uh, how to, you know, how the gearbox is going to be installed and stuff like that. And we'll get to all of that, literally all of it. But the next thing I want to do is put the main gallery in. So, looking around, there's plenty of places you can put it. However, what you want to do is the whole system has a sequence. And the sequence is... We'll quickly, quickly just do a sketch kind of thing. So what we have is we have the sump there and then we have a line coming up and then we put the pump in. So that'll be the pump and then it goes in, out, back on itself like this. And then this box here, which we'll do it in a different colour like that, that's the filter. And then here we'll have our main gallery feed, and we'll do that in a blue or something. And then this, you know, branches off and feeds the rest of the engine, however you want to do that. Oh, the deal fire. You know, that kind of like that, you know, it just branches off and goes everywhere. What you want to do realistically is you want the pump and the main gallery and the most important bearings which in this case is our crank bearings, because that's the heart of the engine, we want this line as short as possible. And the reason why is the latency, the lag. So as soon as you start the engine, the crank is a-turning. And this is why we have shell bearings. Um, so it doesn't rub in the case, they're replaceable. It's also a soft material, so basically the crankshaft splats on it, and it basically just smears the bearings round in themselves. The actual crank is... You know, as case hardened surfaces. So we want the oil to come from the sump into the pump, into the filter, and into the galleries, straight into our hydrodynamic bearing system for our crank as quickly as possible. And, uh, you know, so this reduces wear. And with that in mind, I want my main gallery there. So we can just come, it's a bit of a shit colour, but we can, i right, tell you what, let's not make it, there we go, that's easier to see. So basically this, well, this isn't the main gallery completely, but we can go from there straight to our main bearings, not a problem, there's our main shell, no it's not, there it is. So you see we're pretty close. So if we're going to do that, you haven't really got anywhere else you can stick it, you could possibly stick it here between the two so just say there but the problem is is this gear gets in the way we could do that bearing that bearing that bearing and then we're in the way and we can't get to this end bearing so we don't want it there we're really left with only one place to put it which is here the other thing is as well is it also feeds to this front one that bearing that bearing that bearing on the balancer shaft 
and then because we've got it here we can do something and end up getting to the head and the rest of it so all of this gearbox feed a lot of that is kind of it's this gearbox in particular it is bled through the shaft so you'll see that the shafts are hollow uh, this one has a branch in it but we come basically through the main bearings here not these bearings through these um, bushed bearings on either side so we need a feed to get to that end and that end and it goes through the gearbox and squirts out through all these holes that are in the shaft can we see some of them holes no, they're there, but we can't see them. The other thing is it also has a drip feed system, so there will be a line. And this is another reason why to have this gearbox. It's a helpful reason to have this gearbox stacked like this. Is If we put it there, let's actually get our orientation right there. We can put a pipe, and usually they just put pipes in with little holes in. And it's the, in a sense, the end of the oil feed just before it drips back down into the sump is we can have a pipe going up here and it'll just basically just drip out that way and drip out that way and drip all over the gears. Uh, and that's the lubrication for the gear teeth. Also helps reduce noise and so on. So that's where our main gallery is going to go. And we start with the most important one, which is, like I say, for the crank and the... Um, Balancer shaft, you know, these are heavy rotating masses, got a lot of weight, they sit down in the bearings and stuff. And the head, you know, a lot of people say, well, isn't the head just as important? The head is very important, but the problem is, is that our sump is down here. You know, gravity dictates where that goes. Obviously, there's dry sump systems and stuff. Now, I don't want to get into a dry sump system. What we're going to do is we're going to finish this design off, and then we will retrofit it in the future for a dry sump system. So it's a continuation. But with the dry sump system, uh, you can change the locations of these things because obviously you're not you are dependent on gravity, but there's a, a scavenger pump. So the scavenger pump takes it from here, takes it to an oil bottle. The oil bottle can then go to a pump up here and supply it the other way around. So you can actually put it in between the head and the crank as long as it gets there. Blah 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 blah. Now that's all we need to do for now is we just need to work out where the main gallery is going to go. The rest will get to uh, like the actual feeds as long as I've got line of sight basically as long as I've got line of sight from that main bearing there to this that main bearing there to this and all the rest of it you might see this intersects we're going to get to that and what that's all about um, and obviously we can we've got a line of sight from our main gallery to all our bearings should have just kept that black shouldn't I there we go you can see we've got a line of sight straight to there as well. The gearbox, like I say, nah, it can run. It's basically splash, it's drip feed. Um, it's not the end of the world. So now we've done that, then we have to start thinking about oil pumps. So the oil pump system sits here. This is a plastic gear. Um, we're going to go into more materials and stuff, material choices in upcoming videos. But we're going to drive it off the crank. There's no reason why not to. The crank is there, so we might as well use it. And then all I've got is the outer housings. And the reason for this is this is going... Well, the reason for this is because I haven't made my mind up yet if I want to do a standalone system or if I want to have um, it, it basically cut into the castings. Now, it's right sat just below the parting line. And the parting line goes through the centre of this shaft and the centre of this shaft. So it might be a standalone system. So basically it's one complete system that you just bolt in and then plumb up. Again, we'll get to that, but I'm just looking at a location. So we are very, very close to the main gallery, which also means we can have our filter at the front as well. The whole filter, there's going to be a filter video on this in this series yeah, because uh, a lot of people like to bellyache and moan about it. The next thing we've got as well that I've put in is the uh, engine mounts. So these are obviously very important. You'll see that intersects there. That'll become very clear in, in, you know, in the upcoming videos. Um, but when we sit it like this, obviously we've got the head as well. We need, we'll deal with that later. But what we've got is we've got to make sure that just uh, you know like engines these days where it's a, a delta box kind of cradle frame or even just using the entire engine as a stress member 
um, the engine is going to, in a sense, hang. So this top casing has two mountings in it, and then there'll be one, two probably in the head, and then one down here. And then somewhere in here, we're probably going to put the swing arm pivot as well. Um, again, we're not going to do the whole frame and absolutely everything. It's just, you know, but we're putting these in now so we know the extent of our engine. You know, how big are we going to make the thing? This is going to be the arse end of the engine. And all the bolts, the main bolts, uh, usually bolt into the top section. So you hang the engine from these and then the bolts are under tension because that's how bolts work. Obviously, if you did it the reverse way and had the bolts coming from the top, you know, your bolts are still under tension as well. But, you know, you've got to kind of work out the balancing and stuff like that, as in the balancing of loads and what takes what. Um, but, yeah, we're going to basically run like this. Um, buh, 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 buh. Because this clutch is so huge, <laughs> um, we're basically going to not have... These look like you put a, you know, a spigot there or a flange there and there and bolt through. With this one, we're actually doing the opposite where we're going to chew out the middle and have just a bar in the center that then bolts outwards or bolts straight through, but you kind of get what I mean. This is just to lay out exactly where they are. Like I say, it's space model stuff to give you a good idea of what's what. And you'll see all of these things come into effect as we progress. Uh, we've also got the pickup tube just because I was fucking around seeing what she's going to look like. Um, so the pickup tube goes from the pump like that you'll notice we have a dual um, rotor I'm going to explain that in the next coming video um, but basically when we do the oil system uh, but basically there's a dual uh, pump so basically we have a single feed for the main gallery and then the accessory feed and I'm doing this like this because it's just a good talking point when we get to that um, but basically all we're doing is we're just trying to lay out the initial box but as you can see, when we look from this side, like that, you can see that we've got a line going on now. And then basically we're going to have a horn here, where we can basically just have a tray going from here. So it's going to be angled like this, basically parallel with this line, like so. There's going to be probably a bump around, and then we can have the horn down here, so we can have the reservoir, the oil pickup, and so on. This might all change, you know what I mean? This might all change, but... As far as we can see so far, this is the extent of the engine. We've got a big gearbox in this thing, and we've got a big clutch in this thing. And we're just trying to stack it all, trying to make the box as small as possible. You'll see there's a big void in the middle. I want to talk about you know, some of them things as well, some of them characteristics, and so on. And I've also made a little alteration to the flywheel as well. Um, we're going to get into that. The other thing is... Um, someone was asking about using instead of having a balancer shaft having the flywheel because this is not a generator just a rotational mass why not have these offset weights on the flywheel very good point and we'll get to that probably not in this series but I'll use this as an example I need to start doing the videos about um, oh, moments of inertia flywheel effect potential energy blah 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 but you can see there's a top case in there i've already started and that will be in the next video um and basically what i'm going to do is uh just build a basic structure around it and then go from there starting with the top case first and then moving down to the bottom case after i've done that and then it'll just slowly progress like i said we are going to have what you could possibly imagine to be a proper engine, you know what I mean? Uh, as I was talking about before, about working out the volume of the water jacket, these also have to be taken into consideration, and these are probably going to have a channel that goes straight away from us, you know, into the screen, um, basically parallel with this mounting. And the mountings aren't going to be this big, this is just, like I say, an exclusion zone and so on and so forth. Where did I put the oil filter just for the shits and giggles? There I did. So there's the oil filter. You could have it that way. You could have it pointing forward. But you're gonna very. I'm gonna do a video just about the oil filter and its location because everyone likes to whinge and say, "Why the fucking fucking put an oil filter there? What a knobhead place!" 
with all said and done after doing all of this and trying to get the most bang for your buck or trying to get as many things into a smaller package with all these other considerations involved like the biggest consideration as soon as we start building this actual framework is oh shit how do you make this thing how do you manufacture that how the hell do you get a clutch past that crank throw how, which way do you feed it in what do you do oh this is all fucking scary you know what I mean? So all of that needs to be taken into consideration. It's all, you know, you could pack all this shit even closer, but can you actually, you know, put it together? Like this void here. You might say, well, that's a waste of space. You could have got that closer. But we need to bolt either side, all the way around the crankshaft. You know, we, we need to lock that crankshaft in. If you make all this too close to it, how the hell are you going to get any fittings in there? You know what I mean? There is already a just a big enough gap here. You might stick one here, one here, between the main caps and bearings, maybe some here. Stuff like that. And then there's a big bearing here, so you've got to squeeze in there and there. So you've got to you know, consider these things when you're doing them. Otherwise, you can sandwich it even closer together and go, look how fucking tight and compact. And then you're going to have to super glue your engine together because you can't possibly get any fittings in there and the clearance around them and stuff. Hope that makes sense, and in the next part we will be literally starting to build the box. There's a lot of things missing. The reason why those things are missing, like the entire head, we can forget the head completely for the time being. The reason why there's some of these things missing is because you have to start building the box, and that in a sense dictates where things can and can't go. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.